So it seems that Games Workshop has announced a new global campaign for Space Marines vs Tyranids, and for people looking to pick up their Leviathan box, you can join the fight on either side, submitting online results to determine the fate of a world within Warhammer 40k history, and also having a rather interesting rules reveal for the winning side out of the conflict, getting to see a few potential model reveals before the other side. As with a fair few of their new releases, they've been promoting it with one of their little cinematic intros, a whole bunch of shots of the Leviathan box, and quite a fun little piece of art where the world of Ogrim is being devoured by a great big Tyranid Moor. Let's talk through the details of the campaign as they've revealed them to us so far, where is this battle taking place, and what new miniatures could be on the way for Space Marines and Tyranids. Hello and welcome back to All Specs Tactics, where today I thought we'd just cover the new global Ogrim campaign that Games Workshop have announced, Tyranids vs Space Marines, and maybe just one way for your initial battles of Warhammer 40k 10th edition to count towards a greater whole and win a prize for the Space Marines or the Tyranids in the form of some interesting new information. Games Workshop have certainly done these global campaigns from time to time in the past, people logging games worldwide to try and win glory for their faction and potentially shape the narrative of one little dark corner of the Warhammer 40k galaxy. I believe that they had previous ones set on the world of Armageddon, and at least one other one since then, but it's been really quite a long time since I've done one of these, so it's quite cool to see the format take a return. It generally does tend to be fairly popular, and just drives a little bit of narrative, and gets people inspired for a few games. The overall idea is that people submit game results, and then they look through the data as to who's coming out on top one faction versus another. The launch date for this campaign is on the 26th of June, it's quite clearly aims to tie in with the Leviathan box, and it's only going to be running for a couple of weeks after that. I feel like maybe they're trying to keep it a little bit more small and manageable, and a bit more targeted, as opposed to something that encompasses every single faction. Interestingly, it does look like it's tied to actually picking up the Leviathan box itself, and a lot of people are certainly looking to do that anyway. According to their preview article, it sounds like the way that you can enter is literally tied to the Leviathan box, I think that's a bit different to how they've done this in the past most of the time. Apparently inside each Leviathan box you'll find a single use code, apparently 13 days for an opportunity to muster your forces, play one game and submit it towards the greater narrative. I feel like this might be a little bit disappointing to some people. Having the code tied to the actual physical box isn't really much good if you weren't planning to pick up the actual Leviathan box in full, and were instead waiting for plastic kits to be released, or maybe splitting the box with a friend who's keeping the majority. It also means that you can't go playing an entire campaign and submitting all of those results to it. It is apparently just the first game of Warhammer 40k, and they say it can be whatever you like, whether it's going to be a really big game with the full box, a combat patrol style game, or guess any other Space Marines vs Tyranid conflicts if you happen to have big collections established already. As it's coming out on the 26th of June, I guess we'll have the full indexes and points by then, so you could go wild if you wanted to. I guess by keeping things locked to a launch code and just a single game though, I feel like it will actually mean that the result is actually a lot fairer than it would have otherwise been. You can't just get people making up loads and loads of games, any one person's only going to have a small chance to affect the overall result. I guess the winners will be heavily determined by whichever side turns out to be most powerful in the Leviathan box set, and whether those elite space marines can triumph over the hordy tyranids with a few big monsters on average. They have given us a fair bit more lore on the conflicts that we'll get onto in just a second, but I thought perhaps the most interesting thing is that they've actually got a fairly meaningful prize going for this. They'll have the usual thing where the narrative shapes one little tiny bit of the 40k galaxy, the hive world of Ogrim will either stand as a bastion of imperial resistance, or get stripped bare by the oncoming swarm, though I guess that's probably why they've chosen to set the conflicts on a secondary world within the system, not on perhaps the biggest and most important world of Sanctum. It's perhaps just a little bit of a throwaway conflict that isn't going to change things too much either way. The more meaningful prize for hobbyists though, is that the winning team will get a whole bunch of new miniatures revealed for their factions before the other army does, so if Tyranids triumph they get to see their new miniatures come in with their codex before the Space Marines, or if the Space Marines win then they get to see their new power armour early. Games Workshop had already confirmed that there will be a model release alongside the upcoming codexes for them, and again this is just yet more confirmation that they are going down the same sort of pattern as last time, with a big release for Space Marines and Tyranids when their codexes drop like the Necrons had last time. Maybe just to sweeten the deal a little bit and encourage a tiny bit more participation, or entrance to the campaign also get a very small chance to win all the new releases. Probably not really something to consider too hard, but will be helpful for a few people I guess. I guess the entrance will probably be somewhere in the tens of thousands, just based on rough sort of distribution estimates for Leviathan. For the lore of the conflict, the battle is taking place on Ogrim, a hive world in the Formidire system. 
This was mentioned in their recent Lawmasters episode for Tyranids vs Space Marines. It seems to be perhaps the linchpin of the Imperial defence, where the swarm is hitting hardest on its path towards trying to get to Terra. It's been fairly maximally reinforced with Imperial defenders, there's really quite a lot of star forts and asteroid batteries around, and it sounds like the actual main battle is going to be taking place on that world of Sanctum, the home planet of the White Templars chapter. In that recent episode, they said that Trajan Valoris and Lord Solar Leontus are both present on that world. They were battling against a Tyranid Norn emissary, some sort of enormous Tyranid organism that tracks down one target that we haven't had fully revealed yet. From this map, Ogrim is a hive world on the outskirts of the system. It's been teased in Games Workshop's promos for Leviathan Box with that holiday on Ogrim reveal. My guess is that it will probably be the world that's represented by that animated trailer that they did. Some Imperial Ultramarines defenders getting reinforced by a bunch of Terminators. Judging by the other lore teasers that they have, it might represent the world that's in that Leviathan book. I believe what they were talking about from that Leviathan book was a world holding out with that Tyranid hunting Lieutenant Castamon on it, and then potentially being reinforced by Captain Agamemnon of the Ultramarines, and taking the fight to the Swarm in earnest while the world is evacuated. There's a bunch of other things on this map as well. A wall of asteroids called the Dawn Wall, a fair few star forts that Space Marine fleets seem to be operating out of, and an interesting Virox Void War and Quarantine Zone manned by Star Forts that's also coming on attack from elsewhere. Really quite fun, and I think it's quite a nice idea from Games Workshop to just try and put a bit more narrative into the first games of 10th edition, which I'm sure a lot of people are looking forward to. Finally, certainly one of the most interesting things about this is the confirmation of big new releases for both Tyranids and Space Marines. These should be dropping alongside their codexes. I believe Games Workshop said that they were coming out in autumn 2023. I was entirely expecting that they would follow the same sort of pattern as they did with Space Marines and Necrons, which should mean that we have probably around about as much to come as we've already seen. Some things are really easy to predict what they're going to come out with, but there's going to be a fair few surprises. I feel like they're probably going to throw us at least a couple of curveballs for both factions. For the Space Marines, they'll probably be having their individual plastic kits for the Leviathan contents, things like the multi-part build for things like Pyroblasters, Terminators and Stern Guard. I'd really quite like to see a multi-part Ballistas Dreadnought as well, maybe with some auto cannons or other heavy gun arms. I'd say pretty much the most certain things out of that are multi-build Terminators, which definitely need their other weapon options adding, and the Terminator Captain whose data sheet allows you to field all sorts of crazy power weapons. I'd be absolutely amazed if he didn't get a flexible model. Otherwise, there's a few really obvious gaps in the Space Marine range. A Terminator Chaplain would round out the Terminator characters quite well. Assault Terminators seem very likely if they're redoing the standard type. And otherwise, perhaps the most requested things besides bigger Terminators previously were things like redesigned scouts similar to the Black Templar designs and Jump Pack Primaris, either an update on the standard Assault Squad or something different. Wouldn't be surprised if we get a few more armoured fighting vehicles too. Then for the Tyranids, we might well see a few individual releases for the Leviathan options. If they do follow the same pattern for Necrons in 9th edition though, a lot of the things from the launch box didn't really get additional options quite as much as the Space Marines did. After the choices though, I'd guess that multi-part Termigans are perhaps most likely to add a bit of value. They've got different weapons like Spine Fist and Devourers, which would definitely need a multi-part kit in comparison with just Flesh Borers on the regular models. Otherwise, Games Workshop has all but confirmed the Norn Emissary, having it feature prominently in the lore on the Battle of Sanctum and giving us this picture of it. I guess it's probably going to be a Titanic Tyranid, could still be something Hive Tyrant size I suppose. Otherwise, I'd be frankly amazed if they didn't update things like the standard Biovore and Lictors, which are in fine cast and are really cool models, and I feel it's very likely that they'd redo Hormagaunts as well, seeing as their models fall over a bit. Gene Stealers, I'm absolutely certain, will get an update at some point, whether or not it comes with the main thrust of the release, though, is a bit more of a question. I feel like a Tyranid kill team for Gene Stealers would be very cool indeed. Tyranids really are a faction that they can go pretty mad on if they want to, though. I'm sure we'll have plenty more fun stuff besides. In any case, let me know your thoughts on the new campaign. Feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics if you'd like to see more like this. I do tend to post new videos just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page, and you can find that linked in the video description below if you'd like to help support. Channel patrons get a bunch of cool benefits, so feel free to check it out down in the video description if you're interested in helping keep these videos coming. In any case, an enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.